Uh, today is a follow-up session. There's been lots of discussion again about bone building. My apologies for being a little bit late. Uh, the other portion of our session, the falls prevention, uh, is very related. Uh, we got about three, four inches of snow in my area today. So the, the falls prevention is, is something I, I want you to just have on the forefront of your mind. Uh, building the bones and making them stronger can certainly be accomplished with consistent regular use of many activities. Today, of course, we're going to be talking about a vibration plate. Um, but with that short term, um, I always like to start these sessions with a line uh, from a, a good colleague of mine, Dr. Bruce, um, who said to me at one point, you know, Deb, no one ever dies of osteoporosis. It's the falls, the breaks, the recovery. So um, if you're working on bone density, if, if you're in a position of being frail and fragile and um, fall prevention is on your mind, um, or you've had a fall, uh, sometimes there's, there's a fear that's a little bit different than the average user when you think about a vibration machine because the fear is of course falling off the machine and uh, one of the, the best reasons that you can consider using a vibration plate uh, for your overall bone health long term is is the first thing a vibration plate does as far as benefits is improves your balance and stability so if you are uh, looking at getting active uh, and working on bone strength as part of uh, your vibration plate routine <laughs> or whether maybe you're looking at a walking group or you're looking at doing some exercises at your physiotherapist, your vibration plate can be used in complement with any other therapy or modality just to improve your balance and your stability. And a lot of my therapists pre or post other things that they're working on will use a vibration plate for that very reason, especially a lot of my my pediatric specialists out there uh, that have embraced um, just the, the advantages that this plate offers in, in your training facilities. So today I'm going to work on a few very simple exercises. Uh, some of you that have followed my past sessions, this may be a refresher. Uh, the, the biggest key, of course, with bone density, as I always say, is consistent use. And that goes for many of the uh, modalities that, that we're dealing with. You know, if you're not doing it regularly, um, you know, you're going through all that newbie stuff again. And with a vibration machine, um, a lot of times I hear things like, oh, it's so itchy, I can't use it. Or, oh, it's so scary, I can't use it. And those all tell me that, you know, you, you haven't probably used it a lot or the, you, the introduction you had perhaps uh, didn't take into account maybe some of the, the symptoms or chronic issues that you're dealing with. So know that a vibration machine, uh, like any activity out there, there's never one path of how to use it. Uh, there's never a program that's perfect because we're all unique in not only with our, our, um, our body type and our lifestyle, but if you are dealing with a condition uh, where you're really trying to ramp up the bone density strength, you've probably gone through a, a number of years to get to that point and it's gonna take some time and, and some consistent use to start seeing the benefits on this machine. But short term, yes, you are going to notice an improve in balance and stability. Uh, you're also going to notice an increase in energy. Uh, if you're uh, following my advice, uh, in general with chronic conditions, I always recommend more frequent use, but much shorter sessions. Stay away from those preset times of 10 to 15 minutes. If you are a chronic issue person, because you, you're not supposed to be doing activity at the same pace um, or veracity perhaps as, as you used to. So if you're dealing with anything that presents fatigue, pain, swelling, any of these symptoms that may hold you back from exercising, a vibration plate is kind of a dual purpose tool. It's going to help you address and manage symptoms, but because it makes you move and feel better, I don't want you doing more than you're ready for, uh, especially if you're dealing with a, a below baseline of health. So keep those sessions short, keep them more frequent. And uh, if you are overdoing it on your vibration plate or in other avenues of your life, it's great that you're making positive changes and wanting to get more active. Um, but if you overdo it, you know, you kind of bring on the fatigue and the muscle soreness. So just keep an eye if, if you're feeling fatigued and drained and overly sore, uh, you may be overdoing it. And that's going to be in, in a couple of ways that I'm going to identify today. Um, and there's never a right or wrong in using your vibration machine. Uh, again, we're all dealing with different bodies. 
So what I'm going through today are simply suggestions that I want you to experiment with on your plate and see what might present the, the best solution for your needs. But I want it to be fun. You know, if, if you're not having any fun and it all feels like work, it's hard to stay motivated and want to be consistent with some of these therapies. So today um, I, I'm using the Relax -a Vibe. Last week I had a lot of questions about my chair. My chair is an old um, hydraulic swivel chair that I stole the top of another chair off of because it had a back and everything else that I wanted. So this is two chairs that have Frankensteined into one. Um, I work with a lot of different heights. I work with a lot of different uh, weights and um, I like a chair that adjusts in more than one way. Uh, for those of you that have never used your plate in a seated fashion, um, it's, it's a way to reduce body weight. So if you're dealing with a recent break or a fall, um, in your life, it's it's a good idea to reduce the amount of body weight that you're being exposed to until your doctor has okayed you for weight bearing activities. And sitting on a stool is is one way that I do that on on the environment of the plate. So today again, I'm working with the Re Relax -a Vibe. I've got the protective cover on it. For those of you that are unfamiliar with this model, this is a padded, heated. Think of it like the ultimate ottoman in your living room. So this provides heat. This portion of the plate is not intended for standing exercises. Underneath, there's a little storage compartment for all of your accessories that come with the plate. And then underneath is the plate. And, and I'm, I'm working on this today. I'm wearing black again. And I'm finding you, you're probably seeing my feet and my legs uh, perhaps better on this later surface. Uh, we're not going to be getting down on the ground for any of the exercises today. Uh, we will be doing standing exercises, and if you are dealing with, um, you know, just poor instability, you're afraid, um, you're recovering from a recent fall or injury, um, or you're not to be bearing weight completely yet, I would recommend sitting in a bar height stool. We want those legs at a good 90 degree or higher. So if you all you have is a chair, that'll work for today, but long term, you don't want the legs going downhill. Uh, you know what it's like trying to get out of that couch that's, that's too low after you've been sitting on it for a while. So, as in all of my sessions, I'm only focusing on oscillating movement today. Oscillating is the primary functional movement. Uh, it's the most researched. Uh, all of Life Pro's models offer this currently. And it most mimics how we naturally move across the floor. It moves us from side to side. Um, when everybody is talking about vibration machines and they're asking me about settings and, and programs, you know, we're, we're only really talking about one side of the equation. With vibration machines, there's lots of different movements, but each movement style has its own characteristics of frequencies or the speeds, but they also have different amplitude values. Amplitudes is how much you're moving each time the plate is moving. And why oscillating mode is special is you are always in control. So if you want more intensity, widening your feet up moves you more, just like a teeter-totter. If you are very frail, if you are prone to falls and you're joining me for the, the session today that I'm talking about, I want you reducing the intensity or the amount of movement. The amplitude you are always in control of. So regardless of what position or setting that you may be using, if it feels too scary or too strong, bring your feet or your hands, if it's an upper body position, closer to the center. For today's exercises, many of uh, the folks that I'm working with on falls prevention are dealing with chronic issues like pain and, and immobility and things like that. So I want you, um, this, this is very opposite to what your manual says, but my experience leads me that the combination between speed and the amount of intensity that you're using as a starting user and anyone for sure with chronic issues, you'll find it more tolerable and more comfortable in a mid speed range. The faster you get going doesn't mean meaner if you're, if you're taking the foot lesson into account. So by bringing your feet, you know, two to three inches apart from the center, bringing it up to a mid speed, it's smoother. I hear hundreds of comments every week about, well, I'm just starting slow or I'm going to go slow. No one said this is a treadmill. And the slow speeds are very choppy, very wobbly. And uh, related to the, today's topic, there's not a lot of research out there about balance. 
sometimes things are just a given. You're standing on something that moves like a BOSU ball. Balance is kind of a given, and they're not spending a lot of time specifically focusing on that because it is observed throughout the course of most studies done on these machines. So knowing that balance is, is a, a huge advantage, it, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to help you with the falls prevention piece. But the slow frequencies, the, the, the few studies there have been specific to balance are in those slow destabilizing frequencies. And I, I want to challenge your balance, but I don't think anybody out there that's afraid of walking across the street because they're, they're so unstable is really ready to get onto a BOSU ball. And that's really what those slow speeds mimic, that destabilization. But in this movement, your body's always working to keep itself stable on the platform. The reason I recommend a mid-speed with a closer foot placement is it's just co more comfortable. It's smoother. It's less challenging. I, I want to improve your balance naturally by your body stabilizing itself. But I don't really want to challenge it if you're just rehabbing from a stroke, okay? So challenging it is, is, is going to be more applicable when you're already comfortable working with balance exercises. If you're just starting out, I'd like you to just take on some of the tips I'm giving you today. So just by sitting here, if you're not able to bear a lot of weight, you still deserve some good circulation and some lymphatic movement, some relaxation perhaps. Um, if you are unable to bear weight at this time and you want to add a little bit more total body action, you can take your, your hands and place them on your knees or take your elbows and lean them on your knees. Again, if, if you want more action, widen up the feet and it's more intense. If you want less action, move the feet closer. There is no exact number for any one condition. It really is a personal experience in what feels good to you and what you can tolerate. I don't want this feeling uncomfortable or too scary because it's not something you're gonna wanna be doing regularly. So find your comfort zone. The next exercise I wanna work, and I did this last week in strength and uh, weight loss and a couple of sessions, and some of this may look universal, but a lot of the moves, okay, today we're talking about bone density, but they may be universal for weight loss because we're working with the same muscle groups. So one of the things many of my clients wanting to improve balance and bone density do is, is a sit to stand exercise where you're sitting on your chair or you're sitting on a, a physical therapist table, but it's also something you're doing normally throughout the course of your day. And what we're going to do is we're going to shift our weight forward and I want you to slowly stand up on the machine. If that's not so scary, you know, this is something that you could add three, four reps of. Um, this is, this is something I want you working very slow and purposefully. This is not a race. This isn't about building cardio today. I want very slow, purposeful movements because I want you focusing on your balance. Uh, for those of you that are, are specifically trying to target balance and you feel comfortable standing on the plate, notice my knees are slightly bent. If you want a little bit more strength, you want to work the uh, strength specifically more in the legs, I really encourage you to bend a little bit deeper. Put a little bit more load on those muscle groups by going lower and you'll also notice it further reduces vibration up past the neck and the shoulders if you're sensitive to that so the best way to improve balance without actually doing balance exercises is to simply close your eyes so for two to three seconds while you're doing whatever standing exercise you're doing i want you to close your eyes count to three and open them back up and what you'll notice in this environment of the plate, with your eyes closed, when you're not relying on your sight, which is 80 to 90% of, of what we rely on to, to make our decisioning in a day, when you take the sight, that sense of the equation, everything else is forced to pick up the slack. That proprioception kicks in. And if you feel you're really, really wobbling, you might want to do something like this. So maybe make sure that you have something to hang on to if you're finding closing your eyes is, is making you fly all over. Or maybe you're just scared. Or maybe, you know, you've heard so many horrible things about these machines or this condition that you're afraid to, to use it in a standing way. So the, something like a chair back is, is a good way just to give you something to hang on to. But I don't want you hanging on for dear life. It's a, the, the key to bone density is bearing your body weight regularly. And as we live in a society where we do less and less of that, we're not bearing our weight as, as regularly. 
the bones are digressing, some of the medications we take are contributing to that, and certainly our food. So we'll do that same exercise. We're just gonna bend slightly. We're hanging on for comfort, and we just close our eyes for two to three seconds, okay? If, if you're willing to stay in this position or go a little bit deeper and just hold to fatigue, anything that you're doing for strength exercises are dual purpose for bone density. They work together. So as those muscles are firing and contracting, they're pulling on those bones and, and, and that's adding to the equation as well. So weight bearing activity. Um, what if you fatigue easily and it's hard for you to stand for long periods? Maybe you're dealing with a cardiac event. Um, maybe you're just in very poor health. Another really good way to boost the bone density is, is of course, incorporating anything that is your own body weight, but perhaps we're adding weight to the equation. So maybe you can't stand for long periods. Well, let's get as much done as we can in, in the time that we've got to work with. So I showed this last week is a good way to accelerate weight loss by making those muscles work harder. The same goes for bone building. So by adding more mass to the equation, I've got 15 pounds on my LifePro adjustable dumbbell. I'm gonna do that same squat. And sometimes when you're hanging on to something, you're, you're focused more on that than the wobbling. It, it actually makes you feel a little bit more stable but you could have the chair here, okay, if you wanted, okay? I don't want you taking on something that you're unable to, to maneuver and, and work with, but by adding a little bit of mass, if you do not have weights, you could use jugs of water, you could throw a couple rice bags in a backpack, do anything that's gonna to add to the mass on your frame to make those muscles work harder, that's gonna to contribute to the bone density. Oops. Another thing that I see really, really commonly uh, with bone density is, is, you know, I've got a lot of weight or I've gained weight because I've been inactive and it's hard for me to do exercise for long periods or it hurts for me to do long periods. So if, if you're looking at getting active, whether you're working with a therapist or a trainer, your plate is a good way to start helping you move, not only with, with more balance and stability, but with more function. So if those exercises so far weren't terribly challenging, but you're, you know, you're not super fit and you don't want to do a big workout yet, let's try something also equally functional, which is some step ups. A lot of my folks have seen these in other uh, segments I've done. Hang on. I got to hit go again. Uh, okay. Still working in a mid-speed range with a conservative foot position. Certainly no more than hip width apart. If you're uncomfortable and, and you're concerned about moving while you're on the plate, I, I encourage you to hang on to the back of a chair. I've, I've used a ladder in other sessions. Maybe put it by the edge of a counter. But what we're going to do this one is we're just going to do some very slow stepping up and stepping down. Keeping that knee slightly bent. For those of you that do need a little bit more movement, a little bit more cardio capacity, this is a good way to, to learn to just start moving. You know, maybe the stairs are scary. Um, maybe walking around the block is too far. Well, this is a good way we can engage those muscle groups, you know, functionally. But while we're on the plate, we're getting just a little bit more action on those muscles. We're boosting our stability and our balance a little bit. If you're feeling comfortable, the next progression would be, let's close the eyes, okay? So looking forward, I suggest hanging on. Close those eyes for every other rep. Down, up, down, okay? Functional movement, it does not need to be a big workout. The key with bone density is consistent, regular weight-bearing activity. And when it comes to the environment of a vibration plate, it is an environment, it's not its own funky thing where you just set it for whatever condition you have or goal that you're looking for. It is a plate and, and what settings are comfortable for you and your goals is really something I want you to experiment with, but specific to the bone density and stability, it's bearing your weight and doing it frequently. So, you know, some of my clients are using their machines five to 10 times a day for a minute or two to manage chronic conditions, but guess what? 
Some of my clients have been working with me 15, 17 years, and we're noticing amazing, like 80, 90% turnarounds in bone density. And we're not doing necessarily anything specific for bone density. We're just bearing our weight in the exercises that we're doing. What the machine does is it brings the environment of less impact with more activity. All those little micro movements are exercising your muscles in a, in a more efficient, faster way. And if you are dealing with fatigue, you're recovering for something and you just can't handle those long durations that certain types of exercise present, this environment of the vibration plate will make, maybe there's exercises you're supposed to be doing now at home or no, you should be doing at home. Any of those exercises can be tried in the environment of the plate. Remember the two lessons that come out of my mouth in every session. You are always in control. The amplitude, the distance between your feet changes the intensity and try it at a mid range speed, a mid program, whatever it is that you like to do. The moves themselves are universal. It's, you know, um, and mixing it up from week to week. I always talk ranges because there's never one specific setting that's ideal um, for every person out there. A lot of it is tolerances and how it feels to you personally. But by mixing it up from week to week, lowering your speeds, changing your foot exercises, you can work with a lot of the same positions. We're very much creatures of habit, um, especially as we've got, as I've gotten older, you know, any, anyone 60, 70, 80, exercise wasn't something that you had to physically invest thought and time into. It was just part of our day. And, you know, we, nobody went to the gym when I, you know, it, it was a very rare thing, but our, our convenient lifestyles has, have taken away a lot of our physical weight bearing activities that we did, you know, during our day. So uh, without that physical um, use of, of our muscle throughout the course of the day and our bones, of course, they're going to digress. And like I say, there could be medications or other factors contributing too. So um, if time is of essence, if symptoms are holding you back, a plate brings so many advantages uh, to the to the act of doing those exercises to improve your bone strength, your muscle strength, improving your weight loss. The plate is just an environment that makes these exercises easier and in a lot of cases brings more benefits to the equation, uh, whether you were looking for them or not. So again, I, I want to recap that that it's not about a setting or a program. Um, it's about bearing your weight regularly. So for those of you that are, like I say, dealing with chronic issues, do it regularly in short sessions. Um, it's going to give you energy. It's going to keep you stable. If you're heading out somewhere for coffee or maybe you're going for a physical therapy question session and you're, you're feeling a little less than stable, a minute or two on the machine, even with your coat and boots on before you head out the door is going to keep you, um, you know, energized, but it's also going to make you more stable for the physical act of just going to see uh, your care providers. So there's lots of ways you can use your machine, not only for from a therapeutic and a symptom management, but every little bit of time you spend on the machine bearing weight is contributing to the strength of those bones. So keep it consistent. Uh, and uh, as I said, have some fun with it. Okay, get some tunes going, uh, wh whatever keeps you motivated. Um, thank you for those that have joined me today. I see there's a few of you here. Does anyone have questions specific to this or something that you're dealing with that I can answer questions on? Um, if you're seeing me on the recorded version today, um, you can certainly tag me always at Debbie with a Y. Uh, if you're looking for uh, something specific from today's question or wise, uh, if you're dealing with osteopenia, Osteoporosis, you know, everybody always likes to fact, well, really, what kind of benefits have you seen? Uh, I've been doing the vibration machines a very, very long time. And uh, in the course, starting as a studio, uh, my husband and I have, have seen a lot of benefits that, that you, you wouldn't necessarily see in a six to eight month study. But what I can tell you is, is they are a modality that more people can use than, than many other um uh, types of activities and, and there, it can, it can be just a symptom management tool. Some people think it's just an exercise tool and that's absolutely false. Diana does have a question. Uh, can my mom's healing ankle benefit? Um, I do have uh, a couple of sessions I've done on pre and post surgery injury. And it really, Diana, it depends if she's in a position to bear weight. If she's not in a position to bear weight, 
sometimes with a vibration machine, it really boils down to your own personal experience in using it. If she's a new user, never been on a machine, you know, she's still got to go through all that newbie stuff of why is it itchy? You know, why am I exhilarated and those types of things. And I would want to make sure that the energy and the feel good stuff that I know it would give her doesn't, doesn't make her overdo things in other areas of her day. She's not supposed to be doing like stairs and dishes. Uh, but if she's at a point where she's walking around and bearing weight, there's always a way that you can use a machine. You know, she's got another leg. So I'll give you an example. Um, you know, so if you've got a break on one side, you know, the other side's doing all the work. So I could probably use a little bit of attention. You know, could she just put one plate, what one leg on the machine? Or would she be comfortable standing and bearing all of that? So even with a recent break, there's a lot you can put the load with modifying your position. You can do a one-legged exercise and keep that leg out of the equation altogether. But if she is bearing weight, um, you know, I, I, it really depends on how her recovery is going. But a lot of my clients that have experience using the machine then have a setback, absolutely want to get back to it. They miss the circulation. Um, the lymph, those types of things. So uh, it really depends. Diana, can you tell me how recently she she broke it? And if, if she's having any issues with her, um, has she had any setbacks with recovery? Or is everything going okay that way? If you're still here, I'm not sure. Um, but again, just like a fitness plan, it depends on her. But if she if she's able to bear weight, uh, generally speaking, it is fine. Uh, what I will say for, for those of you that are experienced users, uh, anywhere that you've had a, a, an area of surgery or injury and you've had repair, guess what? There's scar tissue that's developed there no matter what you do. And sometimes it feels uh, the sensation in that area is different. So it might be more tingly or she might notice an intermittent swelling or redness um, as the body um, just sends more oxygen and nutrients through all that blood flow to that area. So in, in some ways, in an experienced world, if, if everyone, um, you know, ha had the experience under the belt and some of my doctors do, um, many, many are using this as a modality to expedite healing and recovery, but it's knowing what to do on the machine and assessing what each individual person is ready for. So August, September, October, um, you know, she's probably close. Um, I, I don't know what other issues or, or, or factors may be contributing, but if, if she's been okayed for weight bearing activity and she's got some experience using the machine, um, I don't see why sitting in a stool and putting those feet close together uh, couldn't benefit her, but it's, you're kind of just on the edge as far as weight bearing. It really depends on how her recovery going. And of course, you know, you should be talking with the doctor first to see if weight bearing is appropriate. Sometimes uh, in, in things like, ankle surgeries there's pins and rods and some people are more concerned about the machines shaking those things loose absolutely ridiculously ludicrous if if you realized you know each movement is is two to three millimeters whereas you know it's it's 10 to 14 inches every time you take a step the amount of impact is so low um it, it, I, I i can't see it ever being a concern and i've had a lot of people that have used without my advice way too soon but what will happen with with recent incisions and surgeries is we want to make sure um you know that the healing has began uh you want to give those screws or any incision uh points uh if there's stitches things like that you want to make sure that you're giving them adequate time to adhere so i would that's where i would suggest for sure no weight bearing unless you've been in, cleared by your doctor just to be safe if, if there's something a little bit more funky going on um, or there's any complications that you'd like to discuss with me privately, feel free to send me a message, Diana. Uh, but certainly a discussion to have with her care provider. Um, and, and just really, it, a lot of it's based on your own comfort level. What I'll do, Diana, after I get off this session is I will tag in this post the uh, pre and post surgery one. If you want a little bit more information and detail uh, on that avenue, uh, I, I have done a couple sessions on that and I might be a little more specific uh, uh, answering things for you. Uh, does anybody else have questions uh, related to today's session or bone building or falls prevention? Uh, it is that time of year, certainly in my area with the snow. I used to joke uh, back in my studio days, um, you know, come October, November, when the snow would fly, I'd lose a lot of my regulars that would come to my classes. And then because they were afraid of slipping on the snow and we get substantial accumulations of snow at times. 
Um, but then I felt like we had to start all over again in the spring because they hadn't kept the activities up at home. So um, back in the day when just the medical devices and physical places existed, you didn't have the ability to, to do the consistent daily use that I recommend for some of these conditions. And, and I've really seen a direct correlation in my experience with the benefits increasing in the last five, 10 years. And I, I can attribute it only to the fact that these things are affordable. You can access one for your home in most places nowadays. So the consistency of using them become, becomes more logical because you don't have to physically drive and come see somebody like me three times a week. And uh, many of my, my clients are using it for symptom management. So bone density and strength and those type of things are really just an association of, or a side benefit as I like to call it, uh, with that consistent use that, you know, you're doing it regularly to manage your pain and your swelling, but in bearing that weight and doing some of these little modifications to standing, you're also gaining a lot of strength in the muscles and the bone density long-term. So I hope that's helped everyone. I hope that gets you all motivated. Um, if you ever have questions uh, related to this session, uh, maybe it's a session you'd like me to do. Uh, any insight or questions you may have, please tag me at Debbie with a Y, and I'll be happy to get back to you and answer those, uh, especially if you're watching this on a recorded basis. I will see you next week. Uh, uh, same time, same place. I'm not sure on what the topic might be yet. I do want to mention, I, I got a text and an email this morning. Uh, Life Pro is having a sale and uh, there are some uh, up to 15% off on uh, select items. So instead of focusing in on a particular product, I'm just dropping my general shopping link there. Um, if, if you do have uh, anything you've been looking for, 15% um, off is better than my 10% off. Uh, so uh, I, I suggest you take advantage of that if you've got the opportunity and you've been looking at something special. So a little bit of early Christmas shopping, hate to say it, but with the snow falling, um, it, it feels uh, more real. You guys have a great rest of your week. I look forward to seeing you next Monday. And thank you for spending time listening to my ramblings today. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of the week.